When I first started chainsawing a couple of years back, I borrowed a friend's Alaskan chainsaw mill. If you're not familiar with that type of mill, it's one where you put a, a guide, like an aluminum ladder in my case, and you screw that to the log and then you run the entire mill down the log using the ladder as a guide. That worked pretty well. I, I sawed quite a few board feet. Eventually though, I wanted to get into more timber framing and I needed to be able to saw beams. Um, the Alaskan mill would do that, but it wasn't ideal. So after some research, I came across this small mill by Logosol. It's called a timber jig. The way it differs from an Alaskan mill is that the guide is only right here. It's very small, very compact. The Alaskan mill's guide goes all the way across. So it's much harder to saw beams with. This one, however, bolts to your saw and you use something like this, a wooden guide uh, attached to the log. And that's how you get your first cut and then uh, subsequent cuts as well. So I wanted to do a little bit of a walkthrough today and show you how this mill works and uh, maybe, maybe you'd be interested in trying something similar. These are the extensions that come with the mill and they allow you to bolt your saw to the, to the structure. So we're going to just take this saw and we're going to slide it in and line up, line up the holes right there. And that's all it takes to mount the saw to the mill. So as I mentioned, the Alaskan mill uses um, an aluminum ladder as a guide. The Logosol timber jig comes with a few brackets and you buy some one by sixes. I think these are one by sixes. Yep, you buy some one by sixes and it comes with these angle brackets. So it's up to you to decide how you want to build your jig. I used a 10 foot board here and because this wasn't quite strong enough, I added a few more wooden um, angles as well just to stiffen this whole thing up. So this is the structure that we'll use to put onto the log and this is where our timber jig will slide down. To prepare our log to attach our guide to, we want to look and find the nice flat side of the log. Um, like over here you can see we have this big uh, this big branch section and that's not going to be a good place to attach our, our, our guide to. So I'm going to try rolling this log because this section here is pretty nice and flat. It is also required that the ends that the ends of the log are fairly perpendicular to the side that you're going to attach the guide to and you'll see why in a second. So I'm going to start up the saw and I'm going to cut this off right here and get it nice and square with this smooth face here. So it's interesting to note here that sawing, when you're, when you're doing a rip cut on the log, um, you want a different chain. This chain is filed at 10 degrees, which is designed to rip the length of the log. You will notice though that it cut pretty decently here when I cut the end of the log off. So what I have found is you don't have to switch back and forth between a crosscut chain and a rip chain. If you have a nice sharp rip chain, you can do some crosscuts as well. So let's roll this log and let's put on our guide. Now we have a nice flat spot on this side which is where we're going to attach our guide. Along with the long guide rail, uh, the instructions have you make two L-shaped brackets like this using uh, the metal angle brackets. And these are going to be used to be screwed onto the ends of the log, on both ends, and then we'll clamp our, our guide bar, our guide rail, to this. So as we're attaching this here, we're going to make sure that we have it level and that it's sticking out just enough for the guide bar to clear the whole length of the log. So if there's any deformities or any knots, it needs to be around that. So I think right about here should be good.
the height of this uh, this guide now is going to define our first cut. So we want to be low enough into the into the log to take a slab all the way across. So I can go up or down depending on where we need to go. On a longer log, you can attach more of these together. Um, and if it's too long of a span, you can put a block of wood in and run a screw straight through right into the log for, for stability. This is a pretty short piece, so I think we're okay just like this. Now that we have our brackets on and our guide bar in place, I wanted to point out these logs underneath here. These are just a short section of red pine that have a notch cut in them, and they do a nice job of getting the log off the ground, and uh, they also make it so that we can tip this. I'm actually gonna roll this a little bit so that it's easier on the back, so that we're cutting at more of this angle than this angle here. And these logs just help hold everything in place. All right, it's time to cut. This is a 24 inch bar on this saw. Um, I have been doing this with a 28 inch bar, but it just ended up with way too much out here and I was worried about hitting the ground or other things. So the 24 inch bar or even a 20 inch bar would work just fine. This is a little bit bigger timber, but uh, this is a 24 inch bar. Also, this saw is a Huxvarna, Huskvarna, not Huxvarna, Huskvarna 562 XP. I believe that's close to 60 cc's or just under 60 cc's. Um, I would say that's probably about the smallest saw that I would want to do. Actually, I'd, I wish I had one that was a little bit bigger. Um, so I, I pay attention to the RPMs and, and the load on it to make sure that I'm not pushing it too far. So, okay, our first cut is done. Um, we're going to take these brackets off and reposition. The second cut involves taking the bracket and laying it flat on the cut that we just made. So we're going to rotate this log and we're going to screw the bracket directly to the surface of this board. We just need to be careful that we're rotated far enough that we don't run our, the tip of our bar down into the dirt, so i got to move this one a little bit further. That's a bummer place to run out of gas. <laughs> well, that's a good reminder. Check the gas and oil before you start a cut, because it's a pain to change it halfway through. So, okay, there's a couple of things that we could do now. We could, if we wanted to, if we were cutting a beam, we could take this guide off and just use the, the guide on the timber jig to cut, say, a 6 inch or 8 inch chunk off. Or what we could do instead is we can take the guide off and reposition it on this new side so that we end up with three cut sides. I'm just going to eyeball this first one and then I'll take a measurement and duplicate it on that end. Three and a half inches. One more roll. Now we're going to take off our last our last slab here.
as I'm running the saw down the guide, I am keeping it, I'm keeping the four feet flat on this uh, one by six, and I'm keeping the guide pressed up to the board. The jig has these four feet. These turn as they run up against um, the, the front of the guide, and these are fixed. They just slide along the bottom of the guide. So the goal is just to keep it pressed flat down and pressed up towards the front. Now we have three fresh sides. We're just going to turn this up on edge, take the guide off, and use the guide now on the timber jig. We'll use this to make some two by material. There is a scale right here, so I'm going to cut just a little bit over two inches. But just to be certain, I like to take a tape measure and measure it up against the bar. See, there we're at what about just over two and a quarter. Unlike the Alaskan mill, which has a, uh, a bar to stabilize it all the way across. This one just has this small guide. So as we're cutting now, there are two things that we have to pay attention to. We want to make sure that this guide stays flat on the surface of the log and that this portion right down here is staying in contact with the side. If we keep those two things in line, we will get a square cut across the log. There's a board. I don't know what else to say, it's a board. So let's cut another one. So that was a two inch board, let's try a one inch board now. I'm just gonna lower this down and line it right up above the one inch guide, or the one inch mark. Double check. Yeah, we're at about one and a quarter. There's a one inch board. As you can see, it's pretty easy to adjust to any height that you want. If you wanted to cut beams, I think this goes all the way up to eight inches. Um, one thing that I have found on longer logs is that when you get down, cut part of the way through, say halfway or so, the back end of the log likes to pinch down on the bar and it makes cutting just a little bit more difficult. So what you can do is you can pause your cut and you can stick some wedges in there to keep the, the open end of the cut uh, free. Also, if you can keep a nice steady pace going all the way through, it keeps the surface of the board smoother. If you stop and start a lot, you end up getting some marks like this in the board. But I'm just gonna go through and cut the rest of these down at one inch boards.
Well, there you have it. That is the Logasol Timber Jig. Uh, for a small investment, it's about $250, I think. I'm um, in a little bit of sweat. You can turn out some good lumber on your own. Um, I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, anything I need to clarify, leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer. Uh, thanks a lot. I appreciate your time.